Larry is on the old air highway. And look, we're back in the treeless plane. It takes taking her about five k's on this uh, road here to get from the current air highway to the old air highway, which is right here. Now that that is 29 kilometres down there to Nullarbor Roadhouse. Back in the day, this was look how wide it is. This was the main highway. A lot of history along here, a lot of history. Okay, 15.3 kilometres to Ivy Tank. Yeah, of course, the obligatory car wrecks along here. The old HR wagon has been out here a long time. Sometimes they just didn't make it and they got left by the side of the road. And that one is an example. This is the dog fence line. The track I think is probably a maintenance track. There hasn't been any maintenance done on it for years. Now to the right of that fence is Yellow Tar Lands. This must be Ivy Tanks, is it on the hill here? We'll soon know there used to be a, a roadhouse up here. I didn't realise it was coming up so fast. This is Ivy Tanks, Larry. got his ears on. As I say, it used to be a roadhouse here and a, a overnight stop, restaurant, motel. Yeah, it's a welcome sight for weary travellers is what it was way back in the day. This road hasn't been used in 40 odd years and because of the comparative lack of use these days, it's in, in pretty reasonable condition, but it's still as rough as. This is tanks, Larry. Yeah, the road is as rough as, and uh, you can just imagine what it was like with, in the old days. When there, was, there, wasn't, there wasn't a lot of traffic going over by comparison to the day, obviously, but there were potholes and they were filled full of bull dust and So it was. Well, this is Ivy Tanks. Well, what remains of it? There used to be a roadhouse here. Welcome to your accommodation for the evening. Yeah, thank you, sir. I would have imagined you'd have it all up and tea cooked by now. Are we going to uh, fuel her up here? Go and see about a room? <laughs> yeah, well, there's uh, a bit of roof over there. Is this Ivy Tanks? This is Ivy Tanks. That's the tank. OK, cool. And the road from here goes north. Uh, I think you can go up to Cook from here. Right. Yeah. The Ivy Tanks Motel.
read you something about where we're staying tonight here and uh, where my tent is at the moment is probably the sort of the back back wall of the old um, restaurant motel here whatever you want to call it Mary Durack the famed uh, West Australian author uh, from the Kimberley uh, she wrote um, Kings in Grass Castles and, and Sons in the Saddle about the Duracks of the Kimberley uh, she came through here in 1964 and I quote she was she was traveling from west to east and they just been a nullable roadhouse our night's destination for all the promising name of ivy tanks looks like a desolate spot but the accommodation is clean if sparse and the bright little restaurant provides water in a bucket for washing a cheerful proprietor explains in a broad yorkshire accent that he employs a driver to cart water and supplies by semi-trailer some 1100 miles east from perth and 163 miles west from Sejuna, and that, as a result of increased road traffic, he hopes to be able to retire from business in about three years. Not that he has any complaints about the locality. No, it's not lonely, he says. Back in Leeds, I'd be lucky to speak to six people a day. Here I meet 20 or 30 in that time. A lot of them interesting people too. You'd be surprised. So that gives you some, some, um, some you know, a, a bit of an aspect uh, about, uh, about what you know about where, where, we're, where we're camped tonight we've got it now and the way it's been for the last 45 years um, as I was explaining before they, when they built the new road when they paved the air highway in 1970 in South Australia they built a whole new section for a few hundred kilometres right down near the coast whereas they just repaved the West Australian section of the air highway so this school got this there's a few road houses canal to ivy tanks uh, they just uh, all suddenly became you know uh, surplus to requirements and they shut down basically straight away. Remnants of the foundations of the old roadhouse here. It's hard to imagine these days isn't it? The cellar perhaps. Must have had a stairwell on it at some point. I'm assuming this road is uh, as wide and as clean as it is because it's probably used by the Yellowtail people. Uh, this is, um, oh dear, this is currently outside of their land. But we woke this morning, uh, beautiful morning, there's a fair bit of fog around which was slowly starting to lift. As soon as I turned the camera on, Dogs over the way started they were howling and barking. And when I turned the cameras off, they stopped. Strange phenomenon. Seen better days. The old truck didn't quite make it either. It's interesting when you look to see just how wide the original road was through here. You can see the little rises on either side of the road where the grader has been along over the years. It wouldn't surprise me if we were to head over and it's probably smoother than the main road. Nah, not much. There had been someone camp at Ivy Tank uh, not long before us. You could tell because there was a, a green lighter, a big lighter, that uh, we picked up. In beautiful condition, perfect, almost new. And it lit, the, uh, lit, lit the stoves for us last night. Thank you, whoever left that there. 
Are you one for spare parts? Imagine getting out of a more open country where uh, the roads narrow down a bit. Along the way, you see these gravel pits on either side of the road. They were obviously used to fill the potholes, and well, I assume they were used to fill the potholes and that sort of thing. Trees going where the road used to go once upon a time. I guess that would happen after 40 years. It's lined. This runs along the top of the LSR land. We're now going back into the land. Lots of bird life around here. But there say all those calls were a warning to each other, saying there's something strange here. There's someone here who shouldn't be there. It was a beautiful clear morning this morning, but the clouds have certainly rolled in now. It's 11.05 and the skies are certainly clouded up. Nothing sinister in it, but at least we don't think so. Beautiful clear skies last night and out of nowhere it suddenly rained. Caught us totally unawares. A short sharp shower. After that, cleared up. Stars again cold, clear night. Beautiful skies this morning and there's a couple of drops on the windscreen. All of a sudden the plane opens out. Obviously gave up trying to fix it. Spanner. Wouldn't pay much to clean it up. There's another little fence line that we go through, gateway. But whether this is back because of station days or not. And another old Valiant. Well, I'm truly impressed at how good a neck this road is after all these years. I expect it to be a little more than the goat track. It's, yes, it's corrugated. It's limestone. But for all that, still in surprisingly good condition considering I expected more of it to be like this as it is at the moment here. All that stuff in the middle, that was the road once upon a time. Seems that where it's bushy the bush is starting to approach towards the road and uh, narrows the track down. It's 
see you through here really is just to lower your tire pressures and, and drive to the conditions, so try to drive too quick. Another fence line. We currently have phone reception, and I think that's because we're running around the back of the, the Yalatar uh, community. And of course, they would have a uh, Telstra would have put um, comms in for them, and you get the benefit driving down this road. The land has been fairly flat up until now, and now we're starting to run into. Uh, a bit of undulation from hills. Just to give you an indication as to where we are. There's another fence line here. According to the GPS, we're on a pipeline. It doesn't appear to be an above ground pipeline. There's white markers down the side of the road. It's a warning you're running alongside Optus fiber optic cable. Trees are going up along the other side of the road here, it's almost as you know, on the way they've been planted. Well, we bear left here. Another reminder of one that didn't make it. And just a few metres on, another one. And down there is the community. Now this fellow sits on a corner and it looks like a major road going across. It's actually the Yellow Tata Uldia Road. That's it, going across us, heading that way. That is where we are at the moment. Oh, the highway does continue on though. Later model car. And all of a sudden there's car bodies strewn everywhere. We've uh, passed a couple that we uh, that we haven't that we didn't film. One on the other side of the road just here. Ah, oh, 
um, not more than a few kilometres down, mate, I'd say. Uh, so I was thinking of putting two much longer with the book. And all of a sudden, after all that travelling with it, an extremely corrugated piece of road. car on its roof. We well, can imagine what the problem was there. The newer one that was burnt out. We well, can only imagine what its history is. There's been two or three like that just along here. Uh, the road at present, I would suggest, is Reminiscent of what it was like in its heyday. There have been potholes and which leads one to wonder that the road has deteriorated since we crossed the old the old road back to here. Is this maybe not utilised as often by the locals? Maybe they take care of it up the other side, but not down this way so much. Question in my own mind for my own head, I guess. Well, look at the number of car bodies along the road. This road has uh, had its fair share of victories. The road of great contrast. Now we're on some dreadful corrugations and rocky outcrops. Just sitting on there. Uh, 20 kilometres an hour, if that, 15. We're not very far from the blacktop. If this is what it's like, to the end of it, it can't come soon enough. The things that you see when you're driving along, <laughs> it's a, a dog rock. Fashion. Someone's made it like that, it's not a natural piece of rock, but it's just sitting by the side of the road there, next to all the co corrugations. Uh... Well, this road is giving us a fair old farewell. Because we're not too far now from the blacktop. That's not exactly. Now that is hardly a car. Hardly the sort of thing you'd expect to see on the side of the road. So, according to my calculations, We're 3.9 from the highway at that scarifier. This is telling us to slow down because there's a grid here. And the fence line. That's the dog fence. That's about 3.14 according to my calculations on the highway.
I think he's a bit gun shy now that he's had to replace the set of shock absorbers. But I don't blame him very much. This last section has been pretty arduous, but. What has been interesting has been we've had the white Optus posts running down one side of the road and we've had the yellow Telstra posts running down the other side of the road. I would have thought they would have been put in along the main road. There's a bloke along the highway just to our right. <laughs> Uh, there's a bloke going alongside, along the highway just down there alongside of us. Now, according to me, we're about 300 metres from the end, but according to the uh, road, it's going on, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't say so many signs of uh, I want to find out where he comes out. Personally. Reckon we've had our fun, let's get on with it. Stop in, just stop in here and get some deep and then keep going down and undrew, what do you reckon? Well, it's up to you. Like I said, I wouldn't mind finding out where this actually does come out at the other end, but still. As I suspect the Brett is a bit gun shy having uh, put the new shock absorbers in. Yeah, you'll have an answer for me shortly, no doubt. Sorry, mate? You'll have an answer for me shortly, no doubt. If you can't climb it down there, you should have some idea of what you're doing. Yeah, we're running along parallel to the other road at the moment. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so I've chosen to continue on, to actually get to the actual end of the, the old air highway, and he's chosen at this point in time to uh, hang back, and I just want to see where this thing finishes. Yeah, it's actually smoothed out a little bit up here, but uh, uh, it just keeps going. Okay, I'll you jump onto the highway if you want to. I'll just keep going and finish this. Yeah, it's better at the moment. I'm getting a 40 odd. Yeah, 40 uh, kilometre now, I think. Okay. Yeah, the easy thing to do would be to actually jump onto the highway, but uh, I've decided that uh, I want to see where this thing finishes. 
And so, um, you're going to stay with it. Well, we came up to a, uh, a divided fence line. And I took the right road instead of the left road. It looked as though I was going around a tree, and next thing I see there's a fence down the middle. And I found myself out on the air highway. So, we have completed the old air highway. Well, obviously I'm on the blacktop. Larry kept going, because I could see a, a road onto the blacktop here, and he kept going right at the end of the air highway, which is there, the old one. So good on you, Larry. What do you want to do? Okay, find ourselves a... There'll, there'll be a rest area and stuff here. We'll pull in that lunch, eh? Roger there, Roger. If you enjoyed this video, there's over 200 more just like it on this channel. Subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll let you know when our next video is available. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you weren't that impressed, please don't hit the dislike button. Instead, tell us why so that we can do something about it. Thanks for watching.